all the inquisitive hobbits Peregrine took. You are the worst. Hurry, hurry! Hello, my name is Derry Morgan from the Rush University Medical Center, Chicago. And this is the video summary of our recent JGP paper, Peregrination of the Selectivity Filter Delineates the Pore of the Human Voltage Gated Proton Channel, HV1. Proton channels are found in many cells in many species. In humans, they are crucial to white blood cells killing pathogens, histamine release by basophils, sperm motility and maturation, and B lymphocyte signaling. On the downside, they appear to exacerbate breast cancer metastasis and increase brain damage during ischemic stroke. All these functions require extreme proton cell activity. This is because the proton concentration is one million times lower than that of other cations. The proton channel is the most selective ion channel known, and its selectivity appears perfect. We want to know how it achieves this. It is well known that potassium channels are tetramers, with the transmembrane helices S1 to S4 forming the voltage sense in domain and S5 to S6 forming the conduction pathway. When the proton channel gene was identified in 2006 by Mari Sasaki in the Okamura lab and by Scott Ramsey in the Clapham lab, it was very surprising that the molecule consisted entirely of S1 to S4. It was a voted sensor domain without an explicit pore domain. Lee, Letts and McKinnon purified the protein and showed that the proton conduction occurs without any accessory proteins, so the proton pathway must be in S1 to S4. By comparing the proton channel with its closest related protein, c 15 orf 27 which does not conduct any ions, we identified a single amino acid that was required for proton cell activity. This was aspartate-112, in the middle of the S1 segment. When this aspartate was replaced with valine, there was no current. When it was replaced by any other amino acid, the result was an anion current. We want to understand how this aspartate at this position produces absolute proton cell activity. We identified a voltage-gated proton channel gene in a dinoflagellate, a single-cell marine creature. This protein had an aspartate at the same position, right in the middle of the S1 segment at the narrow part of the pore. Just as in the human channel, mutating this aspartate 51 to alanine, serine or histidine produced an anion current. Although the dinoflagellate protein is only 15% identical to the human proton channel, the selectivity mechanism appears to be identical, conserved over a vast evolutionary distance. Here is the basic observation of the new study. The wild-type channel produces proton currents. Replacing the crucial aspartate-112 with valine abolishes all current. But even with valine still at position 112, introducing aspartate at position 116 restores proton conduction. There are cartoons underneath each family of currents showing the positions in the S1 transmembrane segment. The color coding is red for aspartate or glutamate, yellow for valine, blue for the arginine in S4 shown roughly at the level we believe them to reside, Grey is used for all other amino acids or residues that do not face the pore. The currents in the channel, with aspartate shifted one turn of the helix up from 112 to 116, look like proton currents. But to be sure, we measured the reversal potential at different pH, and the result was very near the nurse potential, shown as a green dashed line on the upper graph. So these mutants are proton selective. Put in aspartate at position 116 produced proton currents in two situations. When position 112 was valine, which as a single mutant does not conduct, or alanine, which as a single mutant conducts anions. So the new location, aspartate, is definitely producing proton cell activity. 
it overrules any other amino acid we put at position 112. Now let's put another acidic amino acid at position 116. Glutamate produces proton cell activity just as well as aspartate did, indicating that side chain length is not critical for this function. Now we know that either aspartate or glutamate at positions 112 or 116 can produce proton cell activity. A carboxyl group is necessary. Here is a surprising result. We knew that replacing aspartate with serine at position 112 produced anion currents. Here we put serine at position 116 with valine at position 112. This mutant is permeable to chloride. This tells us that position 116 is quite similar to position 112. Extensive molecular dynamics simulations were carried out on the wild type and all the mutants. The data plotted show average water density within the channel, normalized to the bulk water density. Here we see that pore hydration is similar in wild type and several mutant channels, despite very different cell activity. The membrane boundaries are indicated by dashed lines, with the external surface to the right. A shows the water density for wild type, which is proton selective, and a non-conducting mutant. B shows wild type and two anion permeable channels. C shows two proton selective channels. The average pore hydration is indistinguishable among proton selective, anion selective and non-conducting channels. Therefore, average hydration is not a good predictor of proton cell activity. We need to look deeper to understand proton cell activity. Here are snapshots of several constructs simulated by molecular dynamics. The blue contour shows the volumetric surface of the water within the pore, with the extracellular mouth at the top. Look carefully at the two snapshots in B. These show the filter-shifted mutant, with aspartate at position 116. Most of the time, aspartate 116 was linked to arginine 208, as shown on the left. Sometimes, this salt bridge was broken, as shown on the right. Here is the static field energy profile for the transfer of a positive point charge through various channels. The wild type channel in both panels is shown in red, with the shaded error bars. The wild type channel presents a low barrier to cation movement. However, whenever the charge pair on aspartate 112 arginine 208 is disrupted, a 10 kilocalorie per mole barrier appears, which in principle would be more favorable for anion movement. A key result is observed in the filter-shifted double mutant with aspartate at 116 that was mentioned in the last slide. The pink curve in the bottom panel shows a low barrier when aspartate 116 is paired with arginine 208. However, in the same mutant, Whenever the salt bridge between aspartate 116 and arginine 208 is broken, a barrier appears, shown as the black curve in the top panel. We conclude that the proton cell activity requires charge neutralization at the cell activity filter. In summary, we've tried to understand what it is that makes the human voltage-gated proton channel perfectly selective for protons. We conclude that there must be a carboxylic group present, either on the aspartate or glutamate side chains. It must occur at a narrow region within the pore. It must face the pore. The charge on the carboxyl group must be neutralized by direct linkage to a cationic group, such as arginine on S4. In the human proton channel HV1, this appears to happen only in the external vestibule. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this talk. We hope you've enjoyed it.